Hey, what's going on guys? It's your girl Ari Chambers here to give you your women's basketball news of the week, but we are focusing solely on the bracket. March Madness has started, which is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, and it will be, but it did start in madness. ESPN leaked the bracket around 4.20. It was supposed to go out at 7 o'clock. Um, it was an internal error, and they claimed that they're working with partners to ensure this never happens again. But as a result of that, it was moved to ESPN2 at 5 o'clock. There was somewhat of a pre-reveal, which caused the teams that had viewing parties unable to, to host them. Some teams like Oregon Women's Basketball canceled their parties. While the 7 o'clock show still aired, the element of surprise was taken away from the players, which I feel horrible about. Um, but speaking on a teleconference with the NCAA and ESPN, they said that they did the best they could to create the best student athlete experience possible. So hopefully from, you know, here on out, these errors won't occur. But getting into it, the number one seeds are Mississippi State of the Portland region, Baylor of the Greensboro region, Louisville, Albany region, and Notre Dame, Chicago region. Teams one through six were a toss up of the top four. And after evaluation, the committee decided that UConn wouldn't be a top seed in comparison to Louisville based on the RPI and strength of schedule and uh, signature wins. So as a result, Louisville claimed the top spot. And for the first time since 2006, UConn will not be a number one seed. And the Albany region is super competitive. Mind you, Louisville did beat UConn in regular season. Can they do it again? It's hard to beat the same team twice, especially in elite programs such as UConn, but we'll see because that's where the madness ties in. Also in that region is Tennessee, which was a bubble team that everybody was wondering would make it or not. I know a couple of my colleagues have the opinion that if they made it to the tournament, it would be off of legacy alone. I agree, but the committee has assured us that they take it year by year and just go through evaluations. They said the strength of schedule uh, and the signature wins were major factors in Tennessee getting in. I don't know about that, but that's what they're claiming. And Tennessee has not broken its legacy of making every single NCAA tournament thus far. Going up to Chicago and Notre Dame, they're going to have to face a, a lot of tough contests. It's going to be interesting to see the offense structured against DePaul, who is known to be a heavy offensive team and a similar pace. And Texas A&M is also in there region so we'll see if there are any upsets or if it's going to be predicted final four and lastly we go to Greensboro with Baylor who is the overall number one team still and a number one seed but they'll have to face the likes of South Carolina Kentucky NC State so it's going to be an uphill battle for them definitely a competitive region really excited to see it I will be present again Horribly disappointed at how the bracket was revealed yesterday, but very excited to see what's to come of March Madness because there's some competitiveness, especially, especially in my opinion, the Albany and Greensboro region. We'll see how this plays out. We can see a completely different Final Four. There's parity like we've never seen before. So you have to tune into hypostoops.com for all of your updates, and we'll see you next week.